Hello, I'm Teresa Conway Hayes in Boise, Idaho. And today on Stampin' with Teresa, we're going to make a card using the, um, let me go ahead and switch the camera right away. We're gonna use the Brood For You photopolymer stamp set. And then we're also going to use the dies that this bundle is with and it's just called brood so these are some nice dies you get a die for the beer mug a die for the beer glass die for the wine glass and a die for the jug you also get dies for the foam and there's a little die for the indentations or whatever in the beer glass or beer mug and then I believe this is a hops plant and then there's also a little um, I think there's like four of these of these little ones and maybe they're little hop leaves I'm not really sure okay so put that away so I don't lose it and I'm going to be using this so I'm going to put that close by and put that away this is what the card is going to look like it's a photopolymer stamp so as you can see I have my piercing mat ready and I'm also going to be stamping a background on this white layer so I have my piercing mat covered so that I can use it to um, keep my desk area clean. And I think that's all I want to say about this card right at this moment. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I think first what we'll do is we'll take this card base, which is three and three quarters by five inches. And we're going to take the smoky slate and this stamp, the wine glass stamp. Just checking my hands to make sure I don't have any ink on them. It's real easy to mess up your project on white cardstock. There we go, that'll do. I'm gonna grab a wet wipe here and clean this off. It's not such a big deal because what I'll be stamping next is black, so I could technically dip into the black ink with this gray ink on it and wouldn't cause any problems because it's okay to go lighter to darker. So this is done. Um, so now I'm going to take a piece of scratch white paper. Yesterday I did a video on how I have got my craft room together finally. So voila, no shaking camera. And so far I think I've been able to keep what I'm demonstrating within the camera view. That's just a lot of fun for me. Um, 
It's been something that I've been struggling with. And so I'm glad that I got my craft desk in my room now so that um, I don't have to fight the camera. Yesterday when I was doing it, it kept falling. And it usually, I mean, it's not doing it now, so I don't know why it was doing it yesterday. It's weird. Murphy's Law. So the first one I did one wine glass. For this one, I'm thinking I might want to do two. So there's the wine glass images. Now, I'm going to put this black ink away. Actually, I'm going to do the rest of my inking. So we're going to do the jug on this. I think it will fit. And it's nice to have these little pieces of scrap to stamp onto because I'm going to be using my, I need this back. I'm going to be using my um, Stampin' Up mini die machine. I know it's embossing die machine, blah, 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 but I'm just going to call it my die machine, my mini die machine. The rest of it's too many words for me. That looks good. Now I can put the black ink away. And actually, I forgot. I already had a little piece that is three quarters by three inches long. Oh, I do have ink on there. Let me get rid of that. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp that again. I like to stamp sentiments upside down because for some reason it seems to help me to get it straight. Let's see if it works this time. Not bad. Looks like it's got a little smudge there. Smudges are just an excuse to put an embellishment or something like that on it. So I'm going to lay this over to the side. And let's see. We're going to go ahead and we're going to... Now, the other one, what I did was I took Mary Merlot and I stamped it with the stamp. But I didn't like it, so I'll show you what I did. So first, I went ahead and stamped it. And it's just too light for me. And it doesn't fill the glass enough for me. That one's a little darker. I wonder what happens if I do multiple stamps. Yeah, well, that's not bad. Let's go ahead and go with this. actually getting better. I like that now. Okay, I'm going to call it good. What I did last time was I took cherry cobbler and I colored it in. So that's why it looks so dark. But then you don't have these cool little white marks. So we're going to go with this. I don't think there's a um, Mary Merlot Stampin' Blend marker. I was going to look, but yeah, I don't have all my markers memorized. I'm pretty sure I have all of them. 
but I don't remember if that one came out in a Stampin' Blend or not. So let's give my hands a quick wipe again. And we're going to, let's see. We're gonna cut this down so that it will go through the machine. See if I can get a couple things on here. I don't usually die cut during my demonstrations, but I like to switch it up once in a while, simply because I try to make my demonstrations as short as possible, because I don't talk a lot, so sometimes it's too quiet. I think I'm gonna be okay without washi tape on that one, we'll see. It'll be nice if we ever get a magnet. For this little guy. I think there is one for the bigger one, but maybe not. I think there was one for the bigger one and it didn't work. So the little one hasn't even come up yet. It's not even in line. Got to get the big one figured out first, which makes sense. So we've got the jug and one wine glass. We'll get the second wine glass done. And then I gotta find some green paper. I'm gonna tape this one because I feel like that other one came over. Scoot it over. I like to reuse my washi tape for this because if you're washi tape and this isn't usually the case with washi tape but when you emboss it it makes it stick really good but sometimes when you use washi tape on cards it doesn't always stick so feed that through now that I got my big craft desk. It doesn't even wiggle very much when I'm using an embossing machine. That's great. Okay, now I'm going to dig in my scraps and pull out some green. I think I got a green out from neutrals. here. I love using these um, cases for this sort of thing. Now we don't sell this case anymore so I have to get them off of Amazon now but then I just label it and like these are my neutral scraps. And then I have my brights and my regals. I'm trying really hard to organize myself so that I use my scraps. It's time to use the scraps. Okay, 
I'll see if I can move this so you can see it. There's the green. And I want three of these little guys. One. Two. One, there was one more. I really need a magnet on my desk so that I can, there it is, stick into my scissors so that I can put these on the magnet and not lose them. These little guys are really easy to lose. This mini is so handy for it to do on the desk and I can leave it on my desk and if I need more real estate more area on my desk then I can pop these up. and today I was thinking about trying to design um, like an envelope of some kind because these aren't very heavy but like some kind of envelope where I could just set those right next to it. If I had a big rubber band, that would work too. Yeah, I'll think more on that later on. Okay. So we have our wine glass. And this is going to be the last card I make using this die set. So I'm going to go ahead and put these dies away so I don't lose them. Sometimes the cardstock stays, I just like will drop my die and that will usually pull it out. So there's those three. There's actually, there's the third one, and I can't remember where this was sitting at. There it goes. And then I usually count my dice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, and then down here it says 14. You can't really see that, but I promise me, I promise you, it says 14. That helps me know for sure that I haven't lost any of those little tiny things. All right, now we've got all our cutouts. got our two wine glasses, our hop leaves, I think they're hop leaves. We've got our sentiment. We've got our circle, which I cut out of crumb cake using a two, this is a two and a quarter inch circle. Hopefully the fan isn't going to blow my stuff around. Okay, so the way I did this was I started layering. Ah, where'd my junk go? I thought I might have thrown something away. I didn't mean to throw away. My junk was in the trash can. Okay, so before I start putting this together, I need a little bit of linen thread. Let me reach over here and get some linen thread. I'm going to do a double bow for this little tiny double bow. I'm using my bow maker that I bought off of Amazon. Also, don't like to tie bows 
what I'm demonstrating for obvious reasons. I didn't start up another one of my devices so that I could see if anybody was watching and Switcher Studio on my iPad won't show me. So I am gonna go over here to comments because it will tell me if I have any comments eventually. Okay, that's done. So I'm gonna cut that little loop. That was just to make it a double. Now I'm gonna trim that up. Perfect. And then I need, I'm using my glue dots from a paper pumpkin kit. I've been working really hard on using stuff. Using my paper pumpkin stuff that are leftovers, using my scraps. So one of the ways that I'm using my different like leftover kit stuff is with flat mail. And flat mail is something like little port little folios, little albums, junk journals. Mm. Anything, it's kind of like a 3D project and you make um, pockets and stuff like that to put little, little things in. Like I might put something like this in there and um, ephemera type things. So you make it with ephemera type things to decorate it and then you put like ephemera type things in it and you put, you make little pockets and you put little bookmarks in it and I just love doing it. I think it's a lot of fun and I love how it's using up my stuff. It's putting my stuff to good use is what it's doing. Okay, so now I am going to do this a little differently than I did last time. So I'm going to layer on this circle and I need my tweezers because I'm going to be needing that. I need my glue for the little tiny things. So I'm going to put a little glue on here and place this behind my jug. Last time I had to force it in there. Let's see. I want it kind of tilted. Like that. That's what I want. And then, let's see. That's going to go. So then, I'm going to go ahead and work on this. I think I want to trim that down a little bit more. So I probably am ending up trim, trimming this down to about two and three quarters. And I do not like to do this. So I am anxious to be buying the, I think it's called Stylish Dyes. There's two standalone die sets that I want. One is has some stitch shapes, which I think is where the project that I'm casing this from got the circle. And it also had a flagged banner in it. I would much rather be using die for this. Because mine aren't real great. But I'm sure you can do a better job than me. But we have to test our boundaries. We have to, you know, challenge ourselves. Like sometimes my husband will offer to help me do something because he sees that my hands are shaking and I'm like, no, gotta let me do it. I 
might have to keep, you know, doing normal things. Unless, of course, I'm going to spill something all over the place. And I say, yeah, you can do it. Let's save the carpet. Okay, so this goes on top of this. So I'm just going to use some double-sided tape for this. Oops, I thought I had it upside down. I'm going to try and place that in the middle. Hopefully it won't be crooked. And then probably want to cut that down just a little bit. This piece is hard to see. One inch by three and three in a quarter inch, I think it says. So I'm just going to take a sliver off of both sides. And then I'm going to flag this one. Boy, it's really hard to see things on this. And it's later in the day than when I did the other one. So maybe if I take my glasses off. Yes, that did help. Whoa. Wasn't coffee, so it's all good. Last time I wanted a little bit of this brown to show down here. So I'm going to go ahead and place this with double sided tape because that'll make it easier for me to stick things underneath there like the, the hop leaves. Hopefully that's straight. And then I wanted this be a little bit on top of there but I felt like I wanted the leaf maybe not maybe this time I'll use dimensional Actually, I just don't want that there. So I'm going to take it off and I'll replace it because I want this underneath here like that. Yes, that's what I want. So I'm just going to put some glue here. Then, ah. then 
then I'm going to put some glue right there. What's nice about this Berry Art glue is it's not as tacky as the Tombow glue, so it's not as hard to rub off your finger if you get a little bit on you. And then we're gonna just place in these leaves was kind of the hardest part of doing this card, deciding where I wanted to place them. to leave. Oh, I wonder if the fan blew it. No, 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 it's another leaf. Well, phooey, things were going really good up until then. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the wine glasses down. And I'm doing all this on my silicone sheet. I don't know if I mentioned that, but that keeps the glue. I'm still looking for that little leaf. Hmm. I don't see it on the floor. Okay. I give up. This one's going to have two little leaves versus three. And this one's going to have two wine glasses versus one. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together before I put the other. Might have gone flying in the trash can like the jug did. Okay, I'm going to put this down before I put the other wine glass down. So nice to not have to be fighting the camera. I mean, I invested some money in an Archon mount and in Switcher Studios so that I could put together some halfway decent Facebook Lives. Now, I'm not a professional, but I tried to make it look halfway decent. And it's nice to be able to, for that to be the case now. Okay, that kind of looks weird, that sitting off of there. So I think I'm going to put this one up on dimensions, dimensionals and bring it over. Not little dimensionals, big dimensionals. And this one is out of a paper pumpkin kit and it's kind of been driving me nuts. 
looks like it's going to pull off okay today. And then I'm going to use oh, this little piece for the bottom. And then I use the dimensionals so that I can just bring this forward a little bit. So looks like one glass is more towards the back and one glass is more towards the front, or at least that's my reasoning. Okay, time to bring this project home. that out of my way. Those out of my way. Now, I mounted my last one on a piece of craft paper. Our craft paper is spelled K-R-A-F-T. I don't know if all craft paper is spelled that way. I guess so. But um, if you search for it, on the online catalog I just wanted to spell it for you to make your searching easier so I and I would welcome for you to go to my um, Facebook well not my Facebook page but my web page and there's a link there for shopping online there probably is a link on my Facebook page too but um, might be easier just to go to the stampin the stampin bookkeeper dot Calm. and follow that link and then you can shop the whole catalogs not just catalog but both catalogs so this piece was a six by six and I cut these at four inches. So this piece needs to be a four by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna take my trimmer and I'm gonna trim a little tiny bit off. My mini trimmer. I would love if, I don't know, I don't need it because I've got like three of these, but I think there are still people who like these and would like these, like these and would like these. That sounded kind of weird um, because they, they work so wonderful. In fact, somebody should make a big one of that, but actually the guillotine trimmer that I have from when my kids were little and my youngest kid is probably 28 so I've had that for a long time um, anyways what was I about to say it works like a champ 
So then I took a piece of crumb cake, doo, 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 and this is a little bit too big. Hmm. I did the other one. But... Okay, we're going to do some more trimming. You want to dry, what is it? You want to check things ahead of time to make sure this is going to have a very small border on it. I'm not going to have as much fun with the craft paper as I did on the other one. Because I didn't check my measurements much enough to start off with. Which is a bummer, but it is what it is. At least the card's not going to be wasted. Just can't utilize this fun, pretty, pretty, would you call craft paper pretty? I don't know what word I want to use. Oh my gosh, that still doesn't want to fit real good. All right, it's going on there. I think my card base is short. I pre-cut my card bases in my what I call layer ones. Sometimes you're not exactly right. You know, with mass production, those things happen. Okay. It's not perfect, but at least this time my project isn't upside down. Last time it was upside down. And this time I used the crumb cake card base. And you know what? I think I was supposed to trim this white layer and I forgot to. I think that's where we went south on the project. Yep, that's what it was. Silly me. Okay, well, learn from my mistakes. Um, we've got this and then we were gonna take a white layer. This is my little acrylic box of layers. I have colored and I have white in here and a few black pieces. I don't use a lot of black pieces, not layers. Because like I'll use a black card base a lot, not a lot. But I should use them more because I it has a very it really defines the card. And white card bases are kind of plain to me. So I do use them, but it's not my go-to. I probably might alter that and have more black and white cards when I'm full-time RV and less colors. So I'll probably buy like the combo packs of Regals and in colors and stuff instead of a whole pack of crumb cake and a whole pack of Daffodil Delight and a whole pack of Coastal Cabana and all of them. I have almost all of them. But when you live in a trailer, you have to minimize. So. I'll probably start making more black and white and then treat myself for other colors once in a while. That sounds like a plan. Okay, so I want to do just a little bit. Now last time I got an ink mark right there. So I used a leaf. If I do this right, I won't need another leaf this time. There was a little black on that, and I knew it, and I wanted to see what it would look like, and it 
It's fine. I like it. Okay, so there's our project for today. I do like this one better. So why don't you, if you're watching this on the replay, because I didn't see anybody in here while I was live, but if you're watching this on the replay, I would love for you to tell me which one you like the best. If I were to do this again, I would probably do something a little different with that crumb cake circle in the back because it's not distinguished enough for me. Maybe I should have done a little bit of um, blending with crumb cake ink and my blender brush. That might have done the trick. Okay, well, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for taking time to watch this demonstration, and I'll see you again next time.